Hey everyone, this is Herc Magnus and welcome to video number two of this series. And today we're going to talk about tagging and filtering of your sites. So yesterday we showed you how to add sites to your dashboard and today we're gonna to start showing you how to organize things that, so that you can work more efficiently. So up here on the menu in the websites tab, you can see there is a tags button. And if you click that, you'll see four tags. So I'll tell you what each of these tags do. Basically, if you click on the not tagged button, what that will do is it will load any sites that don't currently have any tags on them. If you uh, uncheck the button, then it will basically be tag free and it will load everything. The next one is the not indexed tag, meaning not indexed in Google. So if you want a quick view of all your sites that are not currently indexed in Google, you can just click on the not index tag and it will filter out all your sites and only show you those that are not indexed in Google. The next one is the deactivated tag. And what this is, is if for any reason, any of your websites become deactivated, meaning the communication between the dashboard and your website breaks, um, it will become a deactivated plugin and you can quickly select the deactivated tag to see what those sites are and then you'll be able to start fixing those issues. And finally, the outdated version tag is basically a tag that when you click, it will show you what websites need an update to the Project Supremacy V3 plugin. All four of these tags are static tags, meaning they will always be there uh, at your disposal. But now we're going to show you how you can add your own tags so you can start filtering your sites by different things. So in order to manage tags or create tags, you would just click on any of the tag sliders that says manage tags and you can open those up. And the way that I like to do things, and I think it's a really good way, is I like to create three tags for each site and they're based on color code. So let's get started with that. I'm just going to click on create a tag and I'm going to give the tag a name. So the first one I'm going to do is PBN, which stands for private blog network. So I'll give that a, a name PBN and I'm going to make that an orange tag. And then the URL field, we don't have to worry about it for this tag, but I'll show you what that does in a second. So then I'm going to click save and there you go. I see an orange tag now for PBN. The next one I'm going to create, um, this is the first set of tags that I'm creating is basically the type of site that we're working with. So it's a PBN site or it's a client site, or maybe it's an affiliate site or an AdSense site, but I make them all orange. The type of sites are always orange. So now I'll create my next one and let's call this an affiliate site. Okay. And since it's a type of site, I'll keep it as an orange and I'll ignore the URL for now. So now you can see we have two orange tags for the type of sites, PBNs or affiliate sites. I can create a third tag make that a client site and once again make that orange and save the tag. So that's good enough for now that that demonstrates uh, the tagging and the type. So what we'll do now is create our second type of tag, which is where we host our blogs. I always like to know where my sites are hosted. So I'm going to create a tag and I'm going to do a hosting tag. So one of the sites that we have um, on here, one of these three sites is hosted with a company called one dollar hosting okay it's a very very cheap one dollar host so i'll just put one dollar hosting this time i'll make the tag blue okay so all my blue tags are going are going to be where i host things and this time we're going to add a url and what i like to do with these is i like to add a url that links straight to the login page of this particular host so once i put in the url I click save on the tag and there you can see our first blue host. But this time when you hover over it, you can see that it's now a clickable link and I'll show you what that does in a bit. So next we're going to create another tag. So hosting, we host lots of our private blog networks with a host called easy blog networks. And once again, we'll make that a blue tag. And then of course I'll supply the URL to the login for easy blog networks. And then I will save that. And then finally, for our third type of tag, it's going to be where was that particular domain registered? So I'm going to create a tag and I use a company called phoenix.com to register those. And we're going to make this tag say green. So then I'm going to supply a URL to the login of the registrar phoenix.com and I will save that tag. And now you can see that showing up and it's clickable. And then finally, I'll do one more. Um, I registered another of these domains with a company called register.com and we'll make that a green tag. And then I will supply the link to the login window for register.com and click save. So once I save all my changes, 
those tags are built. But now we need to start assigning tags to our sites. Now, if you have a lot of sites, one of the tags that becomes very, very useful is the not tagged one. So you can click on this and it'll show you all your sites that don't currently have a tag on them. And that's useful for when you do have quite a few sites and you're not sure which ones you tag. But when you're just beginning and just looking at like three sites, it's, it's pretty easy to see that, you know, there's no tags really on anything. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to add tags to 57La. So for instance, I know 57La is a private blog network site. I know it was registered or hosted at Easy Blog Network. So I just have to click on the tag and drag it over. And then, um, sorry, it's hosted with Easy Blog Networks. And I know that this was registered with phoenix.com. So those are the three tags, the type of site, where it's hosted and where it's registered. And then I can click on save changes. And now you'll see that we have sliders for this site that show us quickly that it's a PBN on Easy Blog Networks and the domain was registered at phoenix.com. Also, if I ever need to log into either the host or the registrar, it's just one click away. I would just have to click on it and it will take me to the login page for easyblognetworks.com. So now we're gonna add tags to stop childhood obesity. So this would be more of an affiliate style site, okay? I know I have this one hosted on a, comp on a cheap host, $1 hosting, and this one was registered at register.com, that domain. So now I can save those changes and we'll finally do the last one. This once again is a PBN site and I have it hosted at Easy Blog Networks and I have it registered with phoenix.com and now I can click save changes and now you'll see all our sites have sliders so it's always easy for you to find where your domain, what type of domain it is, where it's hosted and where it's registered. So that's how you add tags. But now we get into filtering which is really, really useful when you have a lot of sites and you need to find things quickly. So for instance, if I wanted to find out where are all the sites um, or what, what are all the sites that are hosted at a particular host, so I can say I want to tag with Easy Blog Networks, I go back up to the tags. There's my four static tags that we talked about, but here are the ones that we added. I can easily click on Easy Blog Networks and it will only filter or show sites that are hosted at Easy Blog Networks and you can see that and you can see how easy that is. This is going to become useful when you want to upload certain themes or certain plugins to certain types of sites. Um, you can filter them first and then upload plugins or themes to only those sites, but I'll show you that in a little bit. The next thing that I want to cover is our tag functions. So for instance, we can have a single tag if I only want to look at say affiliate sites. I can apply that tag and it will only load sites that are tagged as affiliate, but you'll notice this and or switch comes up, okay? And the reason we have that is because you can also do multiple tagging. So for instance, right now we have a tag for PBN loaded, but if we add a second tag, show me all my affiliate sites um, and then maybe show me my PBN sites, and we're seeing you don't have any websites, but we know we have websites that are at one or the other, but the reason that no websites are showing up is because we have the and function on, which basically means show me sites that are, that are a PDN and they are an affiliate, which doesn't actually exist. But if we switch this to an or function, all three sites now show up because what it's saying is show me any sites that are a PBN or a money site or an affiliate site in this scenario. So this function basically says apply all rules or apply any other rules and that helps you filter through your sites very, very quickly. So now that we know how to use all the tagging functions and filters, let me show you how you can use these to bulk upload plugins in a simple way. So the first thing we're going to do is say we want to upload a set of plugins to a certain site. So let's say we want to upload certain plugins to our PBN sites. So what I'll do is I'll click on the PBN tag that will only load our PBN blogs. Then what I'm going to do is go over to the switch view button. Okay. And what that's going to do is load up a list of the particular sites that you have tagged. You can still see the tag functions up here on the screen. So 57 La and CD music are both PBN sites. That's why they're loaded in this screen. That's on the left side. On the right side, you can see we're now able to manage our themes, our plugins, or even our tags. So what we can do is basically view what themes are installed on each of the sites by just clicking them open. And for instance, you can see 2015 is active on all three sites, um, or sorry, installed on all three sites, but it's not actually activated. If this plugin or the theme is activated, it will be highlighted in blue. So it's very, very easy for you to see what themes are actually activated on your particular sites. Now we're going to move over to the plugins tab 
and it will do the same thing. And you can see right now there's very, very few plugins on these sites. Um, there's only one plugin, Akismet Anti-Spam, which is a default plugin that WordPress installs on your sites, but it's not activated only on one of those sites. So if I wanna activate it on all three sites or just the one site, I can tick the box and then just go ahead and click activate and you can see it adds it to the queue to activate that particular plugin. Now, if I wanted to add new plugins, what I could do is select the sites that I wanna work with. This becomes a select all button and these green check marks on the site become individuals. So what I'll do is since I wanna add plugins to all my PBNs, I would select select all. So now you can see what we have loaded is 57 La and CDE Music are selected to work on. So now if I want to upload a plugin, which uh, I do, let's go ahead and click upload plugins. And you can see there's two tabs here. We can upload plugins from a WordPress repository or we can upload plugins that we use all the time and save and I'll show you that in a second. For now, let's just search the WordPress repository for a popular plugin. So Google sitemaps and then we're just gonna click search. Okay, and that will search the WordPress repository for Google sitemaps and there's the plugin that I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do is click install now and what's going to happen is Project Supremacy V3 is going to install Google XML sitemaps on all three of those sites and it goes into a queued history to do that. If you wanna see how things are happening in the back end, you can click on the view manage history and you can see what's happening. So we can see we've already activated a Kismet on Stop Childhood Obesity and we have the Google sitemap plugin queued to be installed on CDE Music and 57La. So the next thing I wanna show you is how you'll be able to store plugins so that you can add multiple plugins to multiple sites based on the plugins you like to use. So for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our account and we're gonna to go to the settings tab. And then right here under this tab, my plugins and themes, you can see we have the ability to upload our own plugins or our own themes and save them for use later. So for instance, if we wanna upload a plugin, we can just click upload. And then this way we're able to upload plugins that we want to use on every site. So let's just go to a folder of mine. I'm gonna to go to WordPress and I'm gonna to go to plugins. These are typically plugins that I use on a lot of my sites. So uh, plugins for PBNs, for instance. So let's upload the contact form and you can see it's uploading that and there it is now saved inside of our plugin repository. So let's upload a couple more. We're gonna put in the easy privacy policy and then let's put in one more. Okay, we'll put in um, the bulk comments management. Just for instance, I don't actually use that plugin anymore because V3 does manage our comments in bulk for us, but this is just an example. So you can see here we have three plugins now uploaded and then our themes, I'm gonna upload a single theme. So I'm gonna go back to my WordPress, I'll go to themes. And one of the themes that I really like to use is actually Aveda. So what I'll do is upload the Aveda theme. Okay, and that one's a little bit bigger, so it might take a little bit longer, it's pretty quick. And there you go, now we have Aveda. So for each of our items, you, there's a couple things. Um, you can see the information of the plugin. You can see the slug of the plugin. You can see what version it is, how big the size is, and when we uploaded that particular plugin. So now that we have some plugins and some themes uploaded, let's go ahead and go back to our websites tab. And then once again, we're gonna turn on a tag and we're gonna upload plugins to our PBNs. And we're gonna click on switch view. Okay, and then I'm gonna select all our PBNs and I'm gonna move over to the plugins tab. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to upload plugins, but this time I'm gonna upload from my own plugins, okay? And you can see there's the three plugins that we just uploaded. But what I wanna do this time is upload all three plugins, okay? So what this is gonna do is now upload these three plugins that I happen to use a lot to all of the sites that I have selected. So that's a quick way to absolutely add multiple plugins to multiple sites by using tagging, filtering, and using your plugin and theme repository. So that also works for themes as well. And there is one more uh, way that you can do that. And let's head over into that side and I'll show you how that works now. Okay, so here we are back at the website dashboard. Now, if I was to click the manage website for any of these websites, it would take us into the single management function of each of them. Don't forget, always synchronize your sites when you come in just to make sure everything's fresh and so that you can be ahead of the 24 hour automatic synchronization. 
And then what I can do is I can click over to plugins and you can see we have these three plugins installed. If for any reason any of these plugins were installed not using V3, maybe you were working in a WordPress site and you downloaded a plugin, but you love the plugin and you want to add it to your repository, you can just go ahead and click on this download button. And what that will do is add that plugin to your um, plugin repository. So if I go back over to settings and I go back over to my plugins and themes, you can see that we now have Hello Dolly saved inside of our plugins. So there's a couple of ways that you can get plugins inside of your repository. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is creating plugin groups. So what this is very useful for is if you have a certain set of plugins that you always like to install on a certain type of website or a certain hosting account or whatever, you can actually create a plugin group. So let's go ahead and do that and show you how that works. I'll create my first plugin group and we're going to give it a name. So let's say I have um, for my private blog network type sites. I always like to upload certain plugins. Maybe it's the contact form, the easy privacy policy, and Hello Dolly. Let's say those were the plugins that I always like to upload to my PBNs. Now I can give that group a color, so it's a lot like the tag, and what we'll do is we'll just make it like a pink or something. You can choose whatever color you want, and then I'm going to save the group. Now you can see these plugins have a tag of PBN. So let's create another plugin group. So let's say we have money sites. Okay, and on my money sites, I always want contact form and easy privacy policy, and we'll make our money sites a green color, and I'll save that group. I'll click OK first, and then save the group. And now you can see we have three PBN uh, tags here, but only two on this side. So let me show you how plugin groups uh, work when you're uploading plugins to multiple sites. So let's head back over to our uh, websites tab. We're gonna turn on the tag for PBN type sites. We're going to click on switch view. We're going to select all of our PBNs. Okay. And this time I'm going to click over to the plugins tab. And when I go to upload plugins, okay, I can go to my plugins and you can see there's a drop down for group. So now I can say, okay, give me the group of plugins of PBN. And this becomes very useful when you have a lot of plugins in your repository. This page can get quite long and then you'd have to go searching for the specific plugins that you want to load or you just create a group, PBN, and it will auto select your PBN plugins for you and then you can add those to the queue. So it's kind of like a tagging and a filtering for your plugins and your themes and that just allows you to work a lot more fast and efficient when uploading plugins um, and themes to your sites. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is now that we have a bunch of plugins and themes uploaded to our sites, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not select a tag this time and I'm just gonna go over to switch view and then I'm going to click on our plugins. Okay, so we can see these are all the plugins that are installed. And I'm just going to open everything up. Okay, and you can see um, Akismet is activated on all our sites. Contact form is only active on one. And we can see Easy Privacy and Google XML sitemaps are not active on our site. So one of the things is when we upload a plugin from the theme repository, do remember that you do have to activate them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click those. I'm going to click on activate and activate for each of those so that those plugins do become active. Now if we head back over to our websites tab inside of the individual uh, manage website. Okay. Once again, I'm going to click synchronize first. Okay. And then I'm going to click over to plugins. Okay. And when the synchronization is finished, you'll see that these plugins will now move from uh, unactive to active. So let's go ahead and click synchronize one more time. And if it doesn't work, we'll check what happens. So we can see that, okay, Google XML site maps is now activated. So it's probably running in the queue still. So you just have to click synchronize one more time. But if you forget, don't worry about it. Because once again, like I said, every 24 hours, the synchronization does happen automatically. I just like to do it whenever I'm working on a blog so that I know I'm working with a freshly synchronized site. So let's head back over to our websites and just double check everything. We're going to switch view. I'm going to select all of our websites. I'm going to go to plugins. And this time we can see that those are now active on every site. So that does it for our tagging and filtering and managing our plugins and themes. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Once again, please leave any comments or questions on the comment section below the video.